good day to Dinarans on the go and in the know, October 30, 2019, no hype, no BS, just the facts, hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next post, I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert, and know that today, we are one day closer than yesterday, first article of interest, SADR joins protests in Iraq Najaf, vows to unseat government, ERBIL. Kurdistan region firebrand Shiite cleric Makada al-Sadr joined protesters in Iraq holy city of Najaf on Tuesday, warning he plans to join forces with the A-rival parliamentary bloc to unseat the government of Adil Abdul Mahdi. The influential cleric comments come as protests continue across Iraq, leading to widespread violence and fatalities. SADR has already withdrawn his backing for the government in the wake of the protests and has called for fresh elections. He accused Iraq top politicians of being under the influence of foreign powers particularly arch-rivals Iran and the United States. In a sign of shifting political allegiances to come, SADR held out an offer of cooperation with Hadi Al-Amiri, head of the Iraqi parliament powerful Al-Fatih bloc. His tweet came in response to Abdul Mahdi letter on Tuesday in which the Iraqi PM asked SADR to cooperate with Amiri if he wants the PM to resign. I ask brother Hadi Alamiri for cooperation in order to withdraw trust from you, SADR told Abdul Mahdi in this tweet, as we will also work on modifying the constitution and changing the Iraqi High Electoral Commission and its regulations. SADR is head of the Saturn Alliance, the largest bloc in the Iraqi parliament. He is also head of the Saraya al Salam militia, which is part of popular mobilization forces PMF umbrella also known as HASHD al-Shabi in Arabic, in his letter to SADR. Abdul Mahdi go to the Saturn leader to meet Al-Amiri and decide on forming the new government in order for me to resign. I can go in front of the parliament and hand over my resignation to the parliament, as other steps need to be considered according to the Iraqi constitution, he added. In order to hold snap elections, the president of Iraq has to approve an official request from Iraqi PM to dissolve the parliament, and parliament must vote on its own dissolution, according to Article 64 of the Iraqi Constitution. In yet another attempt to quell the protests, Abdul Mahdi announced a further package of reforms on Tuesday evening concerning garbage collection, sanitation, and flood prevention far removed from the demands of the protesters. At least 74 people have been killed since the protests resumed on Friday, according to the most recent figures from the Human Rights Commission. Next article of interest. Iraq's SADR calls on rival to join him in ousting PM. File photo, Iraqi Shiite cleric Mokada al-SADR, whose bloc came first, beats with Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi, whose political bloc came third in a May parliamentary election, in Najaf, Iraq June 23, 2018. Reuters al al Marjani file photo, Baghdad Reuters populist Iraqi Shiite cleric Mokada al Sadr has invited his biggest political rival to work with him on ousting the country prime minister as thousands of anti government protesters took to the streets for a fifth day. In a statement on Tuesday, Sadr, who leads parliament's largest bloc, asked Hadi al Amiri, leader of the second largest, to help him introduce a vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi. To answer brother Abdul Mahdi, I thought asking you to call an early election would preserve your dignity but as you have refused, I invite brother Amiri to work with me on withdrawing confidence from you immediately, he said. SADR had on Monday asked Abdul Mahdi to announce early elections but the premier said on Tuesday he would not do so as it was up to parliament, not him, to do so. In a statement addressed to SADR earlier on Tuesday, Abdul Mahdi said that if the solution for Iraq's ongoing crisis was his ouster, it would be easier and quicker for SADR and Amiri to withdraw confidence and have a new government take over. Abdul Mahdi came to power just a year ago after weeks of political deadlock as a compromise candidate between SADR, who leads a populist alliance made up of his followers, communists, and other parties, and Amiri, the head of an alliance of Iran-backed GT militia leaders. Mass protests driven by discontent over economic hardship and corruption have broken nearly two years of relative stability in Iraq. At least 250 people have been killed since the unrest started on October 1st. Next article of interest. Analysts warn Iraq precarious as protests persist. Demonstrators are seen on a building with Iraqi flags during a protest over corruption, lack of jobs, and poor services, 
in Baghdad, October 29, 2019, by Dale Gavlik October 29, 2019 10.46 a.m., Amman, Jordan, as hundreds of Iraqi protesters are hunkered down in Baghdad's central Tahrir Square and other provinces, analysts say the country is facing a precarious moment, one which bold and concrete action is needed from the government, but can and will Iraq's leadership deliver? A renewed wave of anti-government demonstrations has seen at least 250 killed and more than 4,000 wounded this month. Teachers and lawyers' unions, even planning ministry employees, are joining young protesters. Analysts say that nobody, be it Iraq's leaders or the protesters, know where the demonstrations will go. The protests are leaderless, without an organizational structure, and are not unified. But the disparate groupings of the young jobless, activist intellectuals or poor Shiites are clearly demanding an end to widespread corruption, unemployment, the lack of public services, like electricity, and cronyism engulfing Iraq. Anti-government protesters gather in Tahrir Square during a demonstration in Baghdad, Iraq, October 28, 2019. We are here to bring down the whole government, to weed them all out, one protester told the French AFP news agency. Renat Mansour at Chatham House in London believes the protests won't die out and the also status quo won't continue. I think that kind of muddling through is no longer viable. The question is to what extent will the government have reforms that are meaningful rather than the same reforms that we have seen like changing cabinet ministers, promising electoral laws and all of that? Or will there be quite serious structural changes, a replacement of certain leaders, the prime minister, another election? Something more scary sick than that. If armed groups take to the streets to use the protest movement to settle their own scores like last Friday, it could turn quite violent as well, said Mansur. Analyst Omar El Nidawi points to the Iraqi government's shortcomings in the areas of establishing good governance, combating corruption, and creating an inclusive meritocracy with real equal opportunity for marginalized groups. He said this failure is inseparable from the country's deepening entanglement in the rising tension with Iran. A demonstrator sprays medical fluid on the face of a man who was affected by tear gas during a protest in Baghdad, Iraq, October 29, 2019. Renad Mansur said the political elite can no longer fully use the sectarian card, as protesters are turning against leaders and demand an end to Iranian interference in the country. They are rejecting their own leaders because one of the main slogans they say, in the name of religion, they lost us, and linked to that as kind of an anti-Iranian sentiment. They view Iran as almost an occupying force, the same kind of sentiment that they would have had against the Americans, they have against Iranians now because they view Iran as effectively deciding who is in government, who is not in government, who has power, who doesn't have power. One of the main slogans has been Iran out, out, said Mansur. Unlike past protests, these have been met with escalating force from the security apparatus using live ammunition. Activists are also seething over a probe absolving the authorities of responsibility for the killing of scores of protesters. Next article of interest, Iraqi Prime Minister pledges to step down by the agreement of the leaders of the supporting locs. He ruled out the success of early elections in ending the crisis. October 29, 2019 Baghdad, off Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi said on Tuesday that the best way to change the current government is to get an agreement between the cleric Moqada al-Sadr and the leader of the parliamentary bloc Hadi al-Amiri, to change the government without going to early elections unknown, Abdul Mahdi said in a letter to Sadr. If the goal of the elections early change the current government, there is a shorter way, that is to agree with your brother to form a new government, then the Prime Minister can resign and the new government takes office within days I did not move ours, he added, think that the political blocs will cooperate to achieve the necessary vote, while the early elections are unknown, when it will be possible, and will be agreed on the full conditions, and will come decisive results he is said, who asked me to go to the House of Representatives and declare under his dome for early elections under the auspices of the United Nations and a new commission, and I thank you, it is the right of any leader, and any citizen to demand the Prime Minister what he deems a national interest. The ballot boxes are the best way to express the opinion of the people, provided that we get as close as possible to provide all the conditions to match the opinion of the people with the election results," Abdul Mahdi said. Next article of interest, Parliamentary Finance, Kurdistan will not get a budget in 2020 unless it delivers oil imports. 29 October, 2019, the Parliamentary Finance Committee, 
on Tuesday, that the Kurdistan region will not get a budget in 2020 unless it delivers oil imports stipulated in the budget, pointing out that the parliament is determined to solve financial problems with the region and ensure Baghdad to get oil imports, a member of the committee Deputy Siam El Achilles said in a statement to the information that an agreement will occur within the House of Representatives on the budget of the Kurdistan region in order to take measures and ensure that the region does not get more than its entitlement stipulated in the budget. She added that the agreement to be stipulated that the region must hand over Baghdad's dues of oil in order to obtain its share of the budget and it is not possible to re-scenario of 2019. She pointed out that all members of parliament are determined not to vote on the budget of 2020, in case the problem remains with the Kurds, as the vote on the budget is subject to the delivery of Kurdistan Mabtha of oil revenues. Next, latest video straight out of Iraq be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And God bless. Iraq is in the grip of deadly anti-government protests, with 240 people killed so far this month. Latest reports say masked gunmen opened fire on protesters in the holy city of Karbala, killing 18 of them. In the capital Baghdad, meanwhile, demonstrators are defying a curfew. They say they won't leave the streets until an emergency government is put in place. They are calling for an end to corruption and inequality. Some reports say security forces are firing tear gas canisters directly at protesters. Protesters in Baghdad trying to reach the palaces of power and get as far as the bridge. Across the river sits the Iraqi capital's heavily fortified international zone where government buildings are housed. This time security forces fire tear gas at the marches, but they have been using live ammunition for weeks adding to the rising death toll. Officials confirmed that masked, armed forces fired on protesters on Monday night. We are peaceful demonstrators. Those rulers harm the Iraqi people. No salaries, no appointments, no plot of land. Their promises are lies. And now they're hitting us with tear gas. There are no job opportunities here. They stay at home without a hope. The leaderless protests cut across all society, drawing in men and women, secular and religious groups. On another day, these young Iraqis could have been studying to become clerics in the holy city of Najaf, but instead they are out on the street. The scientific seminary and its students and teachers declare their solidarity with the peaceful demonstrators. We tell the corrupt politicians, get out. This is the demand of the Iraqi people. We don't want them. The corrupt should get out. The protesters are angry about what they see as government corruption and a lack of basic services and widespread unemployment. They want the government to step down and have already rejected a package of government reforms. Over the weekend, Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi said anyone disrupting businesses and schools would be punished. But it seems unlikely that this will deter the protesters. And there's been no uh, let up in unrest in Iraq. Aya Ibrahim from our Arabic department is here with me in the studio to provide uh, some of the backstory. Uh, Aya, tell us first, you know, what's behind the anger of uh, these uh, protests uh, that we see uh, now uh, happening in Iraq? Well, Leila, these protests are not something that started today, yesterday, or even the day before. These are ongoing protests that were sparked actually at the beginning of October this month uh, with the sort of sudden sacking of a very uh, popular wartime uh, military uh, uh, military official. This was the spark. This this uh, this anger then developed into anger at Iraq's ailing public services, the high unemployment, uh, the situation of uh, young people there, and these grievances have basically pushed the anger throughout. Um, and now we are the, reaching towards the end of the month. These are all very uh, legitimate uh, demands. You know, Iraq is one of the highest uh, producers of oil in the world. Yet you have high, rife unemployment. Uh, uh, um, poverty, etc. But also the security situation is quite bad. We're two years after the defeat, uh, the so-called defeat of the Islamic State in Iraq, and the security situation is still very volatile. Young people are fed up by this. 
I reported from Iraq uh, from uh, about two years ago, and the demands that young people told me then they wanted are still not being heard today on the streets of Baghdad. So a lot of uh, very legitimate grievances uh, that the demonstrators have. Uh, we've seen a lot of protests in recent years in Iraq. What makes these different, though? You're, you're right. Iraq is no stranger to mass protests. The last was in the southern city of Basra. Uh, this was in September last year, so a little over uh, a year ago. 30 people died then. The difference this time is the geographical spread of them. You see them in across Iraq, in the north, in the south, in the central uh, states uh, as well. They're certainly the deadliest. I mean, we have seen since the beginning of the month the death of about 200 people. Um, but we need to unpack this violence a little bit. It's not just government forces against the protesters. Iraq is a country rife with militias. So in situations like this, this creates opportunity for them to also sort of flex their muscles on the streets and attack the protesters to show their strength to the various political parties that they're aligned with. But I think the main difference is that the people this time don't seem to be deterred by this, uh, uh, this uh, violence at all. They are going onto the streets knowing that it could be their last day. They could die on the street. They feel like they have nothing more to lose. You know, the country since 2003 has been in turmoil and they're done with the sectarianism that has, that they see that many of the protesters have told me have completely torn this, uh, uh, this country apart. Yes, they tore the country asunder. Now, how united is this protest movement? Who is leading it? This is a fairly leaderless movement. It doesn't really have a particular figurehead that is uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the forefront. I think, you know, even if we're looking at these protests in comparison to what is happening in Lebanon at the moment, there are a lot of comparisons. Uh, and certainly it's, it's a, quite an evolution, I think, from what happened in 2011, because the people are not calling for the removal of a figurehead anymore. They, they have seen that if you remove a figurehead, this doesn't mean that the system will go. And if the system, the infrastructure that has created these figureheads still exists, you will just reproduce new ones. So the people are united in this kind of clarion call. You know, the, all, of these, all of these parties, all of these people, they have to go. You know, we heard it in the report that led into this. The corrupt must go if, you're corrupt, if you are corrupt must go. And this is, I think, the main difference. Whether that will actually translate into politics is an entirely different story. This, this is a very entrenched political system, very much rooted in a sectarian division. So we'll just have, we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. Which makes it so much more complicated and explosive at the same time. Aya Ibrahim reporting. Thank you, as always.